Glory Hunter. Aldo was never a supporter of Leith Star, and he was never yin for keeping his thoughts on the matter to himself. Then there was me and Craig who have followed him religiously since we were old enough to wipe our nurses. It didn't matter whether it was pishing down with rain and no even the sight of the four horsemen on the horizon would deter our support for the team. No doubt we would still be there freezing our balls off in the famous red and white hoops of the mighty Leith Star. Though that didn't stop Aldo forever taking any opportunity he got to shite all over the team's chances of tasting victory. That's showery useless shite, he would often say. I'm fucking telling you no yin of the eleven fannies would even make the bench for the Edinburgh Athletic wheelchair team. You've got to remember, likes. His open contempt for the club and its players was always said with an earshot of the boys on the team. Especially since the majority of them are local lads and they would spend their weekends boozing down at the carousel just like everybody else. But when your talent's been caught into question by a six foot two coked up steroid induced mountain, then understandably, eh, that initial urge to react becomes somewhat diluted. Just on Wednesday past, eh, I was round at Craig's flat to sort out numbers for the supporters' buses for a big trip here to face the dangerous Bonnie Rig Rose in the Scottish Cup. This game is huge for us, likes, as the winner gets Clyde at home in the next round. And not only that, but the match will be televised live on BBC Alba. Soon, as we ironed out the details for the buses, that's when Aldo's newfound love for the team came up. I thought this would be a good time to get his thoughts on something that's been niggling away at me lately. Everybody kent this was not a love that was going to stand the test of time, but still... I was curious as to what somebody else thought. Craig, I said, can I ask you something? Sure man, shoot. Sure. It's just, see how Aldo usually hates the star so much? Do you think it's just he lacks a bit of community spirit, or is he just a cunt? Craig paused for a bit before answering, and I could tell he was giving the question some serious consideration. I don't know, do you, man? I mean... He did kick the shite out of Santa last year, eh? For some unknown reason, I had completely forgot about this. It was probably due to the fact there's been a thousand incidents involving Aldo since then. Oh, hi, I told him. Refresh my memory again, what, what was all that about? It's something to do with his ho-ho-ho being too festive, mate. I just stood there in the kitchen as I tried to process and understand why Aldo had done what he did to Santa. But nah. I drew a blank, and I couldn't quite get my head round what had happened. Too fucking festive, I said. But it was Christmas. I, I can, man, Craig says sympathetically. But then again, Dougie, Aldo is a Muslim. I, I said, I have fucking noticed. But you say that as if it should all make fucking sense now. What the fuck has being Muslim got to do with anything, though? Well, Craig explains, to Aldo... Santa's just some fat fuck in a red suit, eh? And that didn't help that any of his runners had been pinched with two inches of ching. That was all the info I needed. Suddenly it all made fucking sense to me. Aldo didn't spread Santa across the street because he was acting too festive at all. It could have been anybody, eh? He was simply letting off a wee bit of steam. I mind the very moment Aldo went for wishing a terminal diagnosis on each of the Stars players to embracing them as a bunch of long-lost brothers, although he would often deny it. Oya's initial negativity towards him had stemmed from the failed trial he had when he was a bairn, but it took the win against BSC Glasgow for all the years he ill-willed to supposedly disappear. Whether it's a glorious victory or another heartbreaking loss, me and the rest of the boys end up back at the carousel. It's a sort of tradition, Ken. And on that particular day, all the way back from Glasgow, I found myself dreaming of the moment when I'd set eyes on Aldo and the satisfaction and relish I'd get in rubbing his puss in it. I made a conscious point of getting to the boozer before everybody else. Darted off the bus, so I did. It was practically a sprint. I wanted to be the first cunt to tell him all about our great triumph. I had it all planned out in my head. Pure premeditated mindfuck. Make him think the team had actually went down in calamity, before I revealed that he had actually gone and fucking won. As soon as I walked in, I caught sight of a familiar picture. Aldo props up against the bar, whilst old Maggie was stood behind it, busy pulling pints. The both of them were chatting away to each other, and as soon as Aldo cloaked my presence, I could tell my depressed puss had done just the trick. Because I could see in his eyes and the way he was trying not to smirk that he was just ready himself to start dishing out his usual pish about how shite the team were. 
he was stood there, all self-congratulatory and proud of himself. And I can right there and then that I had him on a string. He was basically foaming at the mouth there, eh? salivating at the mere prospect of wiping his ears with your dreams and aspirations he left in the Scottish Cup. <laughs> Lost, did they? He asked, all gloating and confident that this was just another glorious failure for the club. Useless motherfuckers. No, I tell him. We fucking won! I roared so hard my lungs felt as if they were ready to just explode there and then. Although this cunt still seemed unable to accept my good news and didn't think twice about expressing his doubts. Pish! He scoffed. Fuck knows what you're smoking today, Doogie, but be a pal and send some my way, eh? I'm telling you, we won, I tell him. And if we beat Bonnie Rig Rose, then the next gen will be televised here, live on the BBC. They're going to be at the game, I know, to talk to some of the supporters if we win. It wasn't until Mayor and Mayor Bode started to pile in the boozer and the choruses of we're going to win the cup rang out that the cunt looked as if he believed I was telling the truth. He did seem startled with all the noise and a bit overwhelmed with the sea of red and white he was now faced with. As he turned and faced firmly in my direction, it was clear to me his mind was going into overdrive, processing the possibilities of the next round. The uh, BBC, you say? He asked as his eyes began widening at the thought of getting his five minutes of fame on the telly. Aye, Aldo, it's fucking quality. Sure is, Dougie son. Sure is. Uh, listen, I've just remembered I've got to be somewhere. He shouted back at me as he made a hasty exit of the pub without muttering even so much as a goodbye. A good hour passed by, and there was still no sign of him. Then, just as every cunt had seemed to have settled down, and he comes, charging through the doors as if he's John Wayne and any of those old westerns who's come to save the town for destruction. It wasn't even his dramatic entrance that caught my attention either, it was mere to do with what he was wearing. The cheeky bastard was stood there in the centre of the pub, dressed head to toe in the red and white of the yin and only star. Fuck knows where the cunt got it, for likes. But he even had yin of the big red and white foam finger hangs. Again, like the yins you see at the American football games. You could have heard a pin drop, I'm telling you. Everybody there seemed to be frozen in a state of shock. And the sense of disbelief which contaminated the atmosphere grew stronger once he began belting out the fans chanting, There's only one leaf star! He went round the hail room embracing anybody he could find who was also wearing a leaf star strip. And he kept muttering the same words o'er and o'er again, We're in this together, lads! Honestly, it was fucking outrageous. And I doubt I wasn't the only boy who was observing him with clenched fists for we all can't find well what he was up to. Glory hunters are, after all, all the same. Aldo would only be around for the good times. He had no intention whatsoever in sticking around for the bad. The big match with Bonnie Rig Rose has seemed to arrive in no time. Three supporters buses left for the carousel at around quarter to two. Bonnie Rig is a wee working class town on the outskirts of Edinburgh. I've heard a lot of stories about these Bonnie Rig cunts, but I try not to listen to that sort of thing. Better just judge for myself when we get there. The bus has been rocking for the moment we departed and it's only coming up for the back of two and every cunt is either half cut or coked up. Or, in Aldo's case, a deadly combination of both. After he seemingly tires himself out with all his singing and questionable chants, he decides to join me and Craig at the back of the bus. You seen that film Groundhog Day? He asks us, all out of breath and pissing with sweat. Aye, Craig says. Bill Murray's in it. Aye, that's right, says Aldo, who seems to appreciate Craig's knowledge of the film. Murray's all right, says Craig. Aye, he is, but I'm trying to make a point here. No discuss his fucking acting credentials. Aldo, calm down, man. We're here to enjoy ourselves, I quickly remind him. Well, he says, I was watching the hang on the telly last night. And I got me thinking, eh, that boys like us are just like him in the film. We wake up repeating the same day, hour and hour again, with the purpose of making some posh cunt rich. That's uh, an interesting way of looking at it, man, I tell him. It's the only way to fucking look at it. Listen, the opium of these posh cunts is the blood, sweat and tears of the working class. And the opium of the working class is anything that blanks out the realisation of Kenan were a mere slave to the capitalist machine. I never had Aldo doing his name Karl Marx, but I've got to admit it. For Yancey seems to be talking sense, and that's just what's scaring the fucking life out of me. 
as he appears to make himself cushy on the seat he gestures for his bath to come closer, before uncharacteristically whispering, Lads, I've got good news. I've taken care of it. Taken care of what? Ask him. The fucking match. Me and Craig give each other a worried look. After all, this is Aldo we're dealing with, and absolutely anything is possible. Craig tries to make a joke about the situation by indirectly asking him a serious question. You didn't kidnap Bonnie Riggs' manager's wife or something, did you? Tell me you never, Aldo, I plead with him. Because I wasn't sure whether to laugh or phone Justine for an alibi. Of course I didn't kidnap the boy's wife, for fuck's sake, lads. What do you pay the miserable bastards take me for? Okay, I tell him. So what have you done then, exactly? You'll see for yourselves during the match, he tells us. But trust me, you'll know when to miss this. <laughs> As he has a little sinister laugh to himself. With the colour for Craig's pus quickly draining away and my heart beginning to beat at an alarming rate, it was clear Sutton was telling us both that this is going to be a long day, regardless of the actual result of the match. We arrived at Bonnie Riggs Ground, New Dundas Park, for around quarter past two. The place was situated behind some shitty looking boozer called the Calderwood. Just as everybody else off the bus makes their way inside the ground, Aldo drags me and Craig inside the pub for a pre-match pint. For how busy this shite hall is, I can tell Bonnie Rigg is out in force to cheer on their team. I was a bit hesitant about coming in here due to the real possibility we might just end up getting our heads to play with. Especially if Aldo decides to cause any of his infamous scenes again. For the moment we walk in, everybody just seems to stop what they're doing to a good look at us. Aldo scans the room and the first words out of his mouth then he endear us to the natives. Fuck me, he says. The only thing worth pulling in here is a pint. Grab a seat, lads, I'll get the beers in. He goes and makes his way through the crowded pub and doesn't seem to get a fuck that he's left us staring back at a room full of pusses who look as if they're ready to reach for the nearest pitchfork. We've only been in here for no more than 20 seconds and Aldo's already pissed off most the folk in the room. Even as me and Craig hastily try to find an empty table, I can feel all the glaring eyes bearing down on us. Thankfully, though, it's not too long before I cloak a few spare seats located near the karaoke machine. Me and Craig dart towards them and wait for Aldo to return. The pair of us hoping to fuck that nothing kicks off, because I wouldn't miss this match for the birth of my firstborn. Five or so minutes later, and he comes swaggering along with a welcome in sight of three call beers in tow. Know that either of two clowns are too bothered about a pint. The bastards dash to the bog with their big baggy snow, leaving me on my lonesome. By the time they come, the clock doesn't seem to have moved, and things are about to drag on even more. I notice a lassie standing at the karaoke machine. She looks about her age, and even though she's all dolled up, the makeup clearly isn't working. She soon starts to belt out a poor rendition of Tina Turner's Simply the Best, and I can tell with the look on his puss, Aldo is just wanting to say something cheeky. Excuse me, pal, he shouts here to the barman, who is busy serving customers. Aye, what is it? The boy says, in an impatient sort of way. Please, didn't he start anything in here, Aldo? I whisper to him. For Craig's nervous demeanour, I can tell he's as worried as me about where this conversation might end up. We're no like Aldo. We're actually proper Leith Star supporters and this game is a big deal for us. Nothing in particular, mate, Aldo tells the boy. It's just nice to see you give your local comedians a platform to humiliate themselves. As he nods in the direction of the now mortified lassie, who'd just finished her song. That's my wife, you cheeky cunt, the boy snaps. So, you love her anyway, Aldo remarks. Then that makes you a better man than me. This boy's ready to explode. You can just tell by the way his puss has turned pure red that he's a ticking time bomb. I can sense with the tension filling up in the room that we've clearly outstayed our welcome. So, I signal for the lads to drink up and let's get the fuck out of there. It's no long before we've legged it to the shabby looking groom behind the boozer and joined up with the rest of the least star faithful. Straight away, I can see that both clubs are well supported. Probably a lot to do with the telecameras, but the atmosphere in here is definitely that of a big cup tie. The three of us are stood right behind Bonnie Riggs' goals, and their keeper looks more like a cannonball with legs than an actual football player. As we stand there, freezing our balls off in anticipation of the referee blowing his opening whistle, what Aldo had said earlier about fixing the result suddenly comes flooding back into my mind. 
He did, at that moment, appear to be in his best behaviour likes. But still, I couldn't help but be fixated on what the cunt had meant. The game started just like a typical cup tie. Neither team wanting to key in and away early on. It was a pretty boring affair, Ken, cagey in that. That is until Alan Smith, our midfield dynamo, out of nowhere burst straight through on goal. But composure somehow evades the useless bastard and his weak effort trickles into the keeper's arms. Me and the rest of the support didn't heard it too much against him though. Or at least, no voicing it openly. But no Aldo, he's hell bent on getting poor Alan a right piece of his mind. My granny could have hit that ball harder, you fat useless cunt! Get your ass in gear! After that heartless remark, I can see that the real Aldo was starting to bubble up to the surface. Aldo, it's still early days, man, I tell him. Take it easy, will you? Fuck that, he barks. What I tell you boys earlier, eh? That still stands. I'm winning this match for us. I, what the fuck did you mean there, Aldo? Craig asks, almost pleading. Well, see Uncle Fester there, Aldo tells us, nodding in the direction of the plump, bald, dafty and the bonny rig goals. Aye, what about him? I ask. Well, he explains, let's just say he's about to hear a few him truths. I'm intrigued by this comment, and being the nosy bastard that I am, I decide to investigate further. What do you mean by that, Aldo? He glares at us both. Ken Three Finger Louie. Aye, I says. His sister's a doctor. That's right. So you ken the cunt? Well, it would be some fucking coincidence if it wasn't him. I mean, how many cunts Stein and Leith are called Three Finger Louis? I always wondered why he's called Three Finger Louis, Craig spurts. Well, it's because he's got four fucking fingers, you thick cunt, balls Aldo in a blind rage. So what about Louis then? I ask. His cousin's a private investigator and I hired a boy to do some digging into these bonny rig cunts. And that fanny over there has mere secrets in the royal family. Anyway, a grand well spent, I thought. A grand? That's very reasonable for that sort of thing. I always imagined it would be dearer than that, says Craig, who seemingly fails to address the bigger question, which is why has this fucking lunatic hired a PI in the first place? I thought say day, a three-way split. It comes to £349.48, caught 350 for cash. Aldo informs us. Caught? Fuck off. I snap at him. That's against the fucking law. You could get put down for that sort of thing. Invasion of privacy or some pish. Invasion of privacy? Laughs Aldo. You precious doogie, really are. When that cunt put on that jersey, he became public property. Do you want to win? Or no? Well, of, of course I want to fucking win, Aldo. But this is some shameless pish. Hank and Craig will back me up on this. I give him a wee glance. To my surprise, though, I can't see any looks of disgust, but instead he has this expression that says, Why no? Plastered across his puss. Doogie, well, let's not be too hasty here, eh? He tells me. A win's a win. Who gives a fuck how we get it? Can he do any harm, can it? Ginson. This cunt is actually making sense for yance. It's not like playing by the rules has got me anywhere before. This win would set the club up for a good few years to come. And let's be honest, having morals isn't what it's all cracked up to be. You just end up getting fucked. This is why I've decided to give Aldo a nod on the unsuspecting goalkeeper. All Aldo does at the beginning isn't exactly an act of brutality. It's all mind games, eh? As he repeatedly roars in the keeper's direction, Pish water! Pish water! Before the boy's defences finally relinquishes and he snaps, My name's Westwater, you cheeky cunt! Clearly demonstrating that Aldo's already in his head. No worries, Pishwater, you're the boss man! Aldo casually tells him. And it's pretty obvious that by the way he's twitching inside the box, that Aldo's words are getting mere and mere annoying. The game itself has started like a typical cup tie, with both teams playing cautious. A quiet start that has offered Aldo the opportunity to step up his efforts to break this poor bastard. Oi, Pishwater, for what I was told, according to your last medical, you're only young fish supper for a heart attack, that right, aye? Then he produces a crisp new 20 quid note for his pocket and begins to gently wave it in the air. I actually saw a nice wee chippy across the road for the boozer called Piers. 
Take this, eh, and tell Mr. Pier is to give you the greasiest supper he has. Tell him it's on Aldo. Still, though, this cunt seems to surprisingly retain his composure. But it's no escape my attention the colour of your skin has went from milky white to pure beetroot. A fact which does nothing except give me hope that Aldo's plan might actually work. I'll be the first to admit it, likes. This game so far has been near El Clasico, and Aldo will need to pull something definitive out of the bag sooner rather than later. Especially since the keepers will change sides in the second half. I'm going by the time on my watch Sutton will need to gain in the next 25 minutes. Aldo's personal attacks have been getting darker with each passing minute. It's pretty evident he's cautious at the time, too. This fucking lunatic has went for questioning the boy's true motives for volunteering to coach Bairns football. To implying that his Victoria Cross winning grandfather was actually a secret Nazi sympathiser. Yet the stubborn bastard still appears no quite ready to bite back, and by the way Aldo's pacing up and down on the side of the pitch, it's clear he's getting agitated by the boy's lack of willingness not to fold. I'm tired of walking on eggshells with this fanny, Aldo announces to me and Craig. Time to stop being merciful. Eggshells, I giggle. For fuck's sake, Aldo, you just called him the Jimmy Savile Scottish football. You even tried to pin an unsolved murder on him for five years ago. He's no taking the bait, I think it's there now. Just as the stars seem to be building some momentum in the centre of the park, it's then that Aldo goes to make Yin last attempt to get inside the keeper's head. Pisswater! He begins yelling again, while well, the boy tries to remain focused on Leith's impending attack. I was sorry to hear about your daughter, Katie, is it? Nay can't imagine Sir Wee Lassie will grow up and sell their ears for a pound of go to dirty old men. Just for a taste of the brune stuff. You must be so proud, eh? Fucking Nickelodeon's feather of the year standing over there. Fucking hell, man. Our forward, Andy Peters, is straight through on goal. And the daft cunt has hit a feeble shot what looks like a waste of time. But Ken what, eh? It somehow managed to roll under the goalie's arms. Fucking yes! Nobody can deny Aldo took things too far with the boy's daughter, but it looks as if it's done the trick, because there's no way the boy shouldn't have saved that yin. Your supporters have come unglued and everybody's jumping up and down like dafties. The boy is storming towards us as the referee blows his whistle to signal the end of the half, and he looks pissed. You're fucking dead, you cunt! He's screaming as he points towards Aldo. Nick and talks about my burn like that! Just as he gets close to the barrier where we're standing, a few of the stewards stop him just in time. Even with three of these cunts heading the boy back, it's obvious they're struggling to contain him. Me and you, he says, pointing at Aldo. After the match, I'll fucking end you! In typical Aldo fashion, he doesn't give a fuck about the guy's threats, and if anything, seems to welcome them. You promised the yes, sweetheart, he says sarcastically. A comment that only seems to enrage the boy further. We've only went and fucking done it, eh? Held on for a famous victory. Shite game, then they get me wrong, but who gives a fuck about the standard they play? Aldo's master plan to fuck with Bonnie Riggs' keeper has proved to be nothing short of a masterstroke. Your supporters are walking on air right now and every cunt is chanting, We're gonna win the cop! Craig's made a quick run for the bog and Aldo's standing here amongst the fans, smug as you like. As if he single-handedly won us the tie. Which, to be fair to him, isn't that far for the truth. Of course, he's went to drop a knee in celebration of the win. But with everybody jumping about and all the arms getting flung, it's been knocked right out of his hand. For fuck's sake, he roars, before he collapses to the ground to search for the hang. Just leave the fucking hang. The BBC should be here soon to interview some of us, I remind him. Bairns train here, you dafty, he hisses at me. Did you no notice that poster at the entrance? You can be an irresponsible bastard sometimes, Dougie. You really can. I'm left unfounded with that response. I'm the responsible one. You're the fanny who brought that shite into the ground. Most of the fans have begun to trickle out of the stadium. Oh my fucking God, eh? Here comes Pishwater, barging his way through the supporters and he looks as if he's a madman on a mission heading straight our way. Aldo, that boy's coming. I beg with him. Doesn't matter to me, Dougie, son. You're still my mate. Eh? I says. Will you look up? He's closing in on us at lightning speed. So, I tried to block his path as Aldo was still oblivious to our impending problem. Mate, it was just banter. I let him ken. Without a moment's hesitation, he gives me a swift right hand, which naturally sends me tumbling to the concrete. Oh my god. My head is banging. Fucking hell, how hard did that cunt hit me? Where the fuck am I? Is, is this the boozer for earlier? It fucking is, I know. 
There's a woman going about collecting the empties. <clears throat> Excuse me, love. Where am I? The calder would. What? Your mate's dumped you in here. As soon as just like that pair of miserable bastards, I think to myself. Looking at the corner of the room, I'd noticed sitting on the telly. But it, it can't be right. I mean, is that... Aldo? It fucking is, Tay. Can you turn that up, please? I ask. Which a woman kindly does. Jim Spence is standing there with Aldo, who's all but bouncing as he awaits to be interviewed. I'm standing here with a supporter who has followed his team through the good times and the bad. What's your name, sir? Aldo. He answers all gleefully. Well, Aldo, why don't you tell me how proud you are of these players? This is a great achievement for your club. Aye, that's right, Jim, Aldo tells him. We at the start are young big family, eh? I mean, I've been a supporter of the club since I was old enough to crawl. There was nothing like the feeling of community spirit. And can I tell my missus something who's back at home watching? Sure. We did it, baby. And you owe me my hole when I get back. Apologies there for the language, ladies and gentlemen, but forgetting that last remark for a moment, the party currently going on behind me does indeed go to show that community spirit and football do certainly coincide as one. This is Jim Spence reporting for BBC Scotland. Back to the guys in the studio. I'm lost for words right now. The absolute audacity. He just got interviewed by Jim fucking Spence. This is going to be the most surreal moment in my life. Aldo, you dirty glory hunting bastard. <laughs> 